In this video, we will navigate to how to beneficially share responsibility and build, share, build shared vision. So, it is about distributed leadership. As a leader, you need to have four key competencies. First one, comprehend that micromanagement le leads to losing control over management and that good distributed responsibility motivates colleagues toward better performance and outputs. Second, comprehend that quality needed of co-leaders and decentralized leaders and how to use their strengths and weakness. The third one is have, have the ability to share responsibility and to find co-leaders and central leaders benefiting from their strong strengths and weakness for fluent quality assurance process. And the fourth one, respect different personalities. So the key message is talent wins games, but teamwork and intelligence win championships. So what is the shared leadership? Shared forms of leadership dispense with the idea of leader and follower binary, maximizing the co contributions many more individuals can make to solving difficult problems. Support your co-leaders with development of their competencies and give them partial or full autonomy consider their profiles and competencies. So, how you can visualize the shared leaderships? You can use organigram. It is an organizational chart which show the internal structure of the organization, which can help you visualize core responsibility of your colleagues. The employees and in position are represented by boxes or other shapes, sometimes including photos, contact information, link to the website or email contacts, icons or illustration. Straight or elbowed lines uh, link the levels together. So this is the organigram, and now let's leave, look on which kind of organigrams we have. So we can say there are three main types of organigrams. First is hierarchical organ organigram. And a hierarchy is where one group or person is at the top, while those with the less power are beneath them, in the shape of a pyramid. Thanks for example, think of a monarchy with a king or queen at the top, or organization with CEO. With hierarchy, members typically communicate with the person they report to and anyone who reports directly to them. The second type is metrics organization. This usually is seen when individuals have more than one manager. Then we have flat organization structure. Uh, which usually has little or zero levels uh, of middle management and typically consists of two levels, the top administrators and the workers. In organizations like this, the workers have more responsibility and they are more directly involved in the organization process. So what they are the cons and uh, pros of these structures? In a hierarchical, vertical top-down organizations, lines of authority and communication should be clear. If the strength of the structure is a clarity and stability, the potential weakness is rigidity, the inability to be flexible uh, when called for, and the management layers can sometimes flow, bloat an organization as well. So we can imagine for example, this is happening in army. The second one is a metric organization. So cross department relationships may be more fruitful and cooperative. If you have more managers to whom your workers are responsible, on the other hand, it can lead to conflict and confusing loyalties. So we can imagine the problem of dragon with more heads. Last is the flat horizontal structure. Uh, this most layers of management are cu cut out with close relationship between the top and the employees. This is a strange. Employee may feel a stronger sense of teamwork and autonomy. 
So conflicts among employees can become more pronounced due to few people doing the work. However, this is a relatively problematic uh, use in bigger organization, this kind of structure. So let's go to conclusion. What are, let's say, the dimension of organizational design you should uh, take in account? Let's say focus on the four main uh, characteristics, the roles. The roles have to reflect changing world. For example, providing new academic uh, support service like peer advising or creating new functions like research data management. The second, structure. Structure have, structures have to reflect new services and programs, new models of delivery such online education and new kinds of collaboration and partnerships. The third, process. The process should be more student-centered, more agile and responsive to ongoing change, more consultative and the more transactional works get automated. The last, the platform of skills and tools need to be updating as there is often mismatch between the skills and disposition of personnel on the one hand and the roles needed on the other. So, that was uh, our short uh, video about uh, distributed leaderships.